and danger. Speed and split second timing. Most of all, bobsledding is a sport based on strength, athletic ability, and dedicated teamwork. Today, competitors from around the world have come to Lake Placid to challenge one of the most demanding bobsled runs in the world. Lake Placid, an arena which always brings out the best. Ten years after the 1980 Miracle on Ice, ESPN presents the USA-USSR Friendship Bobsled Challenge. The USA-USSR Friendship Bobsled Challenge is being brought to you by the United States Postal Service, official worldwide sponsor of the 1992 Olympic Games, and by Express Mail, overnight service from your post office. From Mount Van Hovenberg in Lake Placid, New York, welcome to ESPN's coverage of the USA-USSR Friendship Bobsled Series. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Singer, along with John Morgan. John, today we're going to see some great speed, some wild action, and some young and talented up-and-coming drivers. Yeah, on both sides of the Atlantic. You know, the Soviets are over here with their 6 through 12 sleds because their top sleds are over there qualifying on the World Cup circuit. One of their sleds is leading the World Cup circuit. Same for the United States. you got Brian Scheimer of Naples, Florida, Chuck Leonowitz of Schenectady, New York. They're also qualifying in that World Cup circuit for that very important seating that you need in World Cup competition. Another guy that's not here, Matt Roy from the United States. He's not here. He's here in town. His sled's not here. And the feel of the American drivers is so good that he doesn't want to compete unless he's got his best equipment under him. Okay, one other notable scratch, veteran driver Brent Rushlaw. You may recall Brent finished in fourth place in the 1988 Olympics in Calgary with Drew John just moments ago. Well, he came up, checked out the track, and again, we had very bad weather conditions last night. He's a little nervous about the track conditions, but I think what's happened is that Brent doesn't have any team all season long. He's had a problem gathering a team together. We interviewed him last week, and we talked about the problems of maintaining enthusiasm for the sport over 17 years. I think that if things don't work out for me, uh, if I don't get a, a team together that I feel confident with, I think that uh, perhaps this year may be the last year. Maybe next year, I don't know. Once again, Brent Rushlaw scratched for today's race. Disappointing for the Americans, but rather than dwell on that, John, let's talk about who is here. Well, the Soviets, Batarak's a very good driver. He's got a lot of experience, and he's a good start team. So it means if you've got a great start time at the top, you have a chance for a great finish time at the bottom. American Rise, you got Darren Peterson from Elk River, Minnesota, very competitive. The Horvath brothers from Youngstown, Ohio, they know this track very well. The Canadians are very well represented, as with the Swiss and Great Britain, too. International flavor. Rainy and warm last night. Beautiful day today for sliding. How will that affect the course? Well, it was warm conditions last night, which means the ice is going to be very soft, which is very good and a safety-conscious aspect for these new drivers that only have seven or eight trips down this track. We aren't going to see the great speeds we'd see in cold weather, but it's still going to be pretty exciting. And here now is a little more about the historic track at Mount Van Hovenberg. At the 1932 Winter Olympic Games in Lake Placid, the bobsled track was one and a half miles in length. At the Games of 1980 in Placid, it was only a mile. And here today, it's been shortened to 1,400 meters because the speeds of the sleds have been too fast for the track. After the riders settle themselves in for one of the most exciting minutes of sport, immediately the driver has a challenge with the smallest, easiest corner on the course, Curve 1. The good pilots will come through clean, the inexperienced ones will skid sideways and lose valuable time. After the challenge of curve one, the pilot must allow the sled to accelerate because up here where the speeds are slow, a mistake multiplies by three at the bottom. Any unnecessary steering is a result of being impatient and inexperienced. You know, every bobsled course has got a pivotal part. Here in Lake Placid, it's the big shady corner at the halfway point. You know, as the bobsledders come through here, they take a high line or a low line. High line's way up here, the low line's way down here. The best line is this medium high line here. The guy who's gonna win the race today is the guy that takes this line all three heats. After a successful shady, the sled experiences a slingshot effect into a long straightaway to the bottom half of the course. A two-corner combination called Little S has been the graveyard of many competitors, but it's the next quarter 12 that has caused the most accidents this year. Beyond Curve 12 speaks for itself. You know, we talked about Shady being the pivotal part of the course. Well, down here in famous zigzag corner, a 90 degree right, a 90 degree left, this is thrill seeker zone down here. 
And this quarter here, this two-quarter combination, one of the most famous in the world, this separates the men from the boys with the time at the bottom. If you're lucky enough to get through zigzag clean, watch out for curve 15. It's here you can't relax because this quarter will suck you up and spit you out of the race. Now the last straight away to the finish. Another four Gs of force in the final corner, and you're through and down. Some sleds will be faster than others, but anyone that finishes will be able to talk about achieving the champagne of thrills. We've set the stage. The sleds are waiting. When John and I return to Lake Placid, we'll have the bobsled action. Stay with us. Our friendship challenge also has some special invited guests. Among them, the first sled at the start, Canada One, and driver Terry Godzowski with his brake man, Len Sundegaard. John, you'll touch on all day how important the start is. Well, the start's one thing. Experience down the track's another. He's got experience down the track because he was here in January for the Can-Am Challenge and did very well. Uh, first place for Sundegaard and Godzowski in the four-man bobsled in that Canadian-American combined series. He did a great exit out of curve one. Everybody else hopes to do so well out of that corner. Trying to break about one minute in time would be a good run in today's conditions during the race. And it's so important as we see that they ride right down the center of that track. It's going to be easy down the center all day long because, again, the track is very soft. We had thunder and lightning storms here last night. And the track, being very soft, allows the powers to put the sleds any place they want. The Canadians no slouches in bobsledding. In fact, a couple of the drivers faring quite well this year on the World Cup circuit. Yeah, he's through zigzag, driving a very good line here. Those runners aren't really skidding. They have a little problem there. This is the first time of the day. Canada won across the finish with a time of 58.69. That will be the mark, which the other sleds must now gun for. Again, I want to allude to the bad weather last night. Thunder and lightning. Unbelievable weather here in Lake Placid. It's a miracle just to have this track open for the race today. Well, it slows the track down. Does it make it any safer? Safer because the drivers can put the sleds any place they want. A lot more control. Now at the start, Voldemar's Baltarogs and Aris Albolich, Soviet Union number one. This is the only Soviet sled in the competition. Soviet sled per se, this is the only one they brought with them. All the other sleds that they're using are American. Now we'll see what kind of start we get out. 5.36, the best start time so far by the Canadians, but a 5.30 as the Soviets now have the top gun. Yeah, a little skidding there, but boy, I like this start technique. A little skid there is going to cost them. But again, this is the only Soviet sled and runners in the competition. All the rest are American made. But this sled, I think, is tuned for the artificial tracks of Europe. So we'll watch we negotiate these corners on the way down. 28.66 on the first split. That wasn't the best split time of the day so far. Not a bad line out of Shady. Let's see how straight he gets it here. This is where you get that slingshot effect with the speed down below. Driving smoothly down the center. Right down the middle. Let's get there, zigzag. Oh, did he pull it off, Zag? It up too high. That driver, Batarogs, 28 years old, was second in the Soviet Union's 1988 national championships. That's along with some impressive Olympic drivers. A finish time for Batarogs and Avalanche, Soviet Union sled number one of 59.31. Good enough so far for second place. You know, Tim, what makes the Soviets so great is their starts. Look at the form of these two. The guy in the back's a little side-to-side -side motion, but look at the driver, the head straight ahead. Look at the legs, look at the thighs. Soviets are very impressive teams at the start, and they're gonna prove that today. Success in bobsledding is generally recognized as a mix between athletic ability and advanced sled technology. Right now, John Morgan with a little more on the technical end of things. Probably the biggest change in the sled technology has been this aerodynamic shell that's been developed to go around the driver and brakeman sleds to reduce aerodynamic drag on the way down. The sleds of old, as you can see from these pictures here, had no aerodynamics in mind. The outside of the sleds have changed drastically, but the steering of the sleds is basically the same. The ropes are simple technology molded in time. There was a period, though, when steering wheels were the standard choice of drivers. This usually was the case when a course had a lot of snow in it, 
But as time went on and run builders made the course more of ice than snow, then the drivers went back to the ropes because they said it gave them more of a sensitive feel of the course. The braking mechanism is exactly the same as almost 75 years ago. Teeth like steel dig into the ice at the bottom to stop the sled, and there has been one constant rule in racing. No breaking a lot of the course until the finish line, because if you do, you'll be disqualified. Tim, there's one real big noticeable change in this track. It's up in Curve Shady. Being born and raised in this area, I used to spend a lot of time as a kid up here, and I used to always watch sleds come in and out of Shady. Look at this shot from three years ago, 1987. The sled travels on the take on up, up high on the Shady corner. Now look at 1990, three years later, after they lowered the start. Less speed, which means the sleds come into the middle part of the corner and fall off a little bit. Noticeable difference, all related to lowering of the start. But a safer difference, I'm sure, for some of these inexperienced drivers. Next up, U.S. sled number one, Darren Peterson, and his brake man, Tracy Ellis. John, we've been hanging around the track over the past couple of weeks. This is one very exciting up-and-coming driver. Well, he's young, 24 years old. He's got a lot of experience in the track from being a skeleton rider for three years before he got to this stage. We'll talk about that skeleton a little later on. Darren Peterson, big man, 6'4", 210, gets the good start time, though, at 534, third best of the heat. And a great exit out of curve one. That makes the start time even better. Tension up here. This is where you got to be very precise. No mistakes like that right there. That shaves off a little time, but that multiplies by three down below. Third year driving for Darren Peterson. A good time, a good year to test just how much progress he's made. 28.55 on the split. That ties him for the second best split. Good slingshot out of Shady at the middle high line. Now look how straight he is into the S. No pressure. Straight as an arrow. So important that that brake man is right behind him, tucking his head in. Really, the aerodynamics is so important. And he wants to feel himself down the course, even though he's got his head buried in there, he still knows where he is. Approaching the finish turn, 58.69, the time to beat, 58.74, just off the pace, second place for Darren Peterson. Good heat for Darren, good heat for his break with Tracy Ellis, too. Results after the first heat of competition, the Canadians have stolen a little thunder of the USA-USSR Friendship Challenge. Canada won in first place with US-1. Peterson and Ellis, five one-hundredths of a second back. Then the Soviets, Ozals and Butsons in third place. USA number five, Roselli and Wrecker. They're followed by USA-2, Ron Horvath and Jim Perella. Stay with us, the second heat and more bobsledding from Lake Placid when ESPN's USA Soviet Friendship Challenge returns. the 10th anniversary of the 1980 Winter Games. Among the events, a reenactment of the opening ceremonies with even a relighting of the flame, a Main Street block party, fireworks, parades, and a special ceremony honoring the Olympic volunteers and athletes. Most notable among those athletes, the members of the USA gold medal winning hockey squad. Two heroes from that team were out for some new miracles on a new kind of ice. John Morgan was with the excited, albeit somewhat nervous, hockey players turned bobsledders. We're going to have the miracle on ice of 1990. Jim, you ready for this? Yeah, they say your life flashes before you, or I have a feeling when I go down here, it just might. <laughs> Michael? Piece of cake. Piece of cake? Piece of cake. Yeah, this is no problem at all. Guys like can't get you killed, you know what I mean? <laughs> the beauty of this is these guys, as they take the ride down, we're going to film the whole length of the course, and we have Tim Slinger at the bottom that's going to interview these two when they get out, and I guarantee you, at least one of them will be shaken. Good luck, guys. What? See you, guys! Unbelievable. First observation. That is unbelievable. Someone take this off? I didn't even know where I was for a while there. You know, it started down pretty good, but holy moly, I was going to eat the eyes open or closed? No, they were open. I didn't know where to. Oh, man, that is something. I'll tell you. How about you, Mike? I watched the whole ride. You watched? Oh, it was outstanding. This is great. I got a new sport. We're going to win the gold in 92. 
Ten years later, Jim Craig and Mike Arruzzioni providing us with a few more thrills. Now back to the bobsledding competition, U.S. number one, Darren Peterson and Tracy Ellis to start off the second heat. As we said, Peterson, a former skeleton competitor, the 1986 Rookie of the Year in the sport of skeleton, John Morgan. Well, if you take a look here at the guys coming down the course, you can see how close their head is and eyes are to the ice itself. That's what it gives you a proper line because your vision is so close to that line in the ice. Skeleton, a former Olympic sport. Yeah, before 48, and you know, it's interesting now, the men and women compete against each other. It's a tremendously popular sport up in Calgary where the conditions are much safer than this track here. Okay, John, now back to the bobsledding. Darren Peterson and Tracy Ellis starting off the second heat, only five one hundredths of a second out of the first place Canadian sled after the first heat. A little final words of wisdom exchange between the two. 534 was their first heat start. They want to better that one. The best start of the first heat was 5.30. Well, look at Peterson with no gloves on. A lot of drivers go without their gloves to give them that better sensitive feel of those very, very sensitive ropes. 5.28, John. A great start for Peterson and Ellis. Yeah, not a bad, oh, I just said not a bad skid, and then it got away from him right there. That's going to cost him probably make a 540 start out of that. What can a driver do to make up time on his way down? Well, you can't make up any time. Given the forces of gravity, your athletic ability to start, your sled, you can only prevent yourself from losing time on the way down, Tim. Well, speaking of time, a good split time. 28-33 for Peterson and Ellis. That moves them out in front. That's a great line through Shady. He's straight as an arrow. Boy, he's a real good pilot down the course. Right dead center. Look at that, hangs that perfectly, doesn't steer the sled at all. Good zigzag, not cutting any ice. You know, when you don't see an ice spray like that, he's got a good heat. Great job through the turns. Of course, the first sled of the second heat, 58-66 on the run, a good run, better than their first heat. And of course, that moves them out into first place for the time being, Darren Peterson and Tracy Ellis. Peterson, whom we saw a few weeks back, farewell in the U.S. four-man national championships. Yeah, two heats within ten hundredths of each other. That's very consistent, and bobsledding and consistency go hand in hand. So the team of Darren Peterson and Tracy Ellis threw in down the first run of the second heat. Now at the start, USA sled number two, fifth after the first heat. This is Ron Horvath and Jim Perella and their start. Well, we talked about the Soviet team. Look at these two guys. Pretty good motion at the start. Into the sled quickly, John, in a time of 5.24. A great start time, the best one so far. Taking another look. Yeah, the replay here, they both hit it pretty good. Now, the guy in the back's been in the sport for one week, but he's very strong, very quick feet. He's a football player. Good training in this sport, football players are, really. Well, well we talked about the technology a little earlier. Of course, we can't ignore the athleticism and a lot of former football players, decathletes, taking part in this sport. Well, like football players and decathletes, they have to play with pain. Here in bobsledding, the ride down the course, you really get beat up. Well, we just saw a moment ago, 28-11 on the first split time, a four-tenths of a second better than their first run. Is the sled getting faster, or the track, rather? Maybe the track's getting a little faster, a little more sun out there. Ooh, he's a little late there, but oh, he skidded back there. Prevented himself from hitting that right-hand wall. Watch into his the, time. Into the final turn, 58-25, John. That's a tremendous run. It didn't look like that. He had some problems up there in 15. Try to steer away from that wall, but boy, good time at the bottom for Ron Horvath. Well, you've mentioned to me several times that sometimes it's those sleds that are out of control that are the ones going the fastest. That time it was. Now it's the Soviet Union. URS led number one, Voldemars, Batarags, and Aris Abolish, 28-year-old and 30-year-old, respectively, out of Riga, Latvia. Look at his form at the start. The head's not even moving. Boy, is he in the sled? Precise start. 506! John Morgan, an incredible Whoa. start. I know you Ooh, got he, excited. Look at about that, what he just did, though. He just erased that 506 to a 520. Boy, that was impressive. Well, we'll see how well he recovers as 28-11 is the Horvath split time to beat. And, of course, these guys don't know the track as well as the Americans as they approach that split. He's pretty straight here. Now, remember, this is a Soviet-made sled. Excuse me, John, but another great time. Well, that's all reflective of the start. It'd be a lot better than that if he didn't have that skid up there and won. But this is that Soviet sled, Soviet runners. He's only had seven trips on this track all week long. This is his second trip here in the race. 
So we're watching one Ooh. talented driver as he goes Whoa. through the zig and the zag up and down quickly. He got problems there in zig and that cost him in zag. Unfamiliar with that quick change of direction. Finish time of 58-60, somewhat disappointing. So, John, a great, great start is negated by a little trouble down the track. Like in golf, you got to have a great tee shot to score. Here in bobsled, he had a great tee shot with the start. Great technique getting the sled. But, boy, that start time's all negated down here in his approach shot to the green. Watch the problems down in zigzag. You'll see here he's guilty oversteering. Look at his sled nose going back and forth. He's playing with it there. Causes him to be late in the zig, late in the zag. He's up, hits the lip right below our cameraman. Thank God for lips or this Soviet be in the trees. Now, just as Katerina Witt or Eric Hyden relied on their silver skates, these bobsledders would be nowhere without their silver runner blades. The runners or blades in the sleds have gone through transitional change. But one factor is commonplace. All teams do whatever the rules allow to reduce friction and increase speed. At the 1932 Lake Placid Olympic Games, the Stevens brothers won the gold medal for the United States by using a blowtorch to heat their runners. After this was declared illegal, competitors have done everything from using diamond paste on the blades to changing the composite steel makeup of the runner itself. In this day and age of the sport, where the rules have standardized the sleds, the runners or steel blades remain as the last great opportunity for a technical breakthrough and advantage. Through the years, the bobsled athletes have tried to find a way to reduce friction with these runner blades. And now what they've come up with is a substance called juice. Juice is basically what they use when they make a machine tool. They put in the mold to reduce friction when they get that out of the mold. They put that same substance now on these runner blades. Now the people who run the races, the jury, before this sled goes down, they'll use a rubbing alcohol to remove all foreign substance off the blades. But now the bobsledders are smart enough to even overcome that by putting a juice on there that even the alcohol can't detect. Final sled of this second heat, Swiss sled number one, driver Donald Holstein. He's 32 years old and the youngest competitor in today's competition, Dominic Schupp, only 21 years old from Switzerland. He's another competitor who's only had about seven descents on this track in practice. I think he's still got a little fear factor about this course. Remember, the Soviet start of 5.06, the best so far, 5.38, off the pace. Let's watch him here in this exit. Oh, he's way off the pace now because of that. In case you didn't know, the Swiss are among the best bobsledders in the world. The gold medal in 1988 in Calgary, and John, they just come off of world championships in two and four man. Yeah, the first Swiss pilot to win double gold in the two and four man since 1947. Gustav Vader did it. And this isn't Gustav Vader right here. No, it isn't, with a split time of 28.57 for Donald Holstein Ooh. and Dominic Shupp. He was just late there off of that exit of Shady. Pretty straight down here where the speed part of the course starts to happen. Oh, and he bumped there, too. John, you mentioned speed. Donald Holstein, the driver, also an auto racer. Well, zigzag, change of direction real high there, coming out of zag. Watch him here out of 15. He, oh, he's overcorrecting, oversteering. A, a couple mortal sins here. A shriek from the crowd with a finish time upcoming of 59.92. Not too impressive a run. Results after the second heat. Ron Horvath and Jim Perella with that great 58.25 run. They're leading the way over two other American sleds. Canada won, which led after the first heat, now in fourth place. Then the Soviets. The standings are tight, so stay with us when we return to Lake Placid, the third and final heat, and much more from the USA-USSR Challenge. Welcome back to the USA USSR Friendship Bobsled Challenge being brought to you on ESPN by Express Mail and the US Postal Service and we'll wait just a moment for the action to resume because John Morgan's here to tell us about weight. There's a lot of technical elements in the sport of bobsledding, a lot of rules and one of them regarding weight. There's a maximum weight with the sleds, but back in 1952, the Germans won the gold medal in both the 2 and 4 man competitions before there was a weight limit. You can see here the size of the guys 
And in the summer of 1952, the world governing body of bobsledding established weight limits for both the two and four man sleds. Now here, this two man sled and crew has a maximum weight of 858 pounds. Now this is a gravity sport and a lot of teams like to go as close to maximum weight as possible to get the gravity and the speeds on the way down the hill. But on some tracks, some teams like to go a few pounds light. Now if the sled's a few pounds light, that gives them a chance to have a faster start at the top. Now up at the start, a full-fledged veteran in this sport, 42-year-old Bob Horvath of Youngstown, Ohio, along with his brake man, Sal Potterfield of Schenectady. He's a tremendously experienced driver, but he's a much better four-man driver because he gets the benefit of three other guys pushing the sleds besides himself for a better start time. And a 5.53 reflects that. Not a great start. Oh, oh, oh there's a the mistake there. Boy, you shouldn't see that out of a veteran pilot like Bob Horvath. And that's really going to cost him down below. Early problems for Bob Horvath among his credentials. The 1987 and 88 U.S. four-man championships finished third in this year's championships. John, I've got to ask the question at the age of 42, how can this guy still be competitive? Thrill seekers. And he's a very good person with the equipment. He pays a lot of attention to detail. Ooh, watch out there. He hit that little opening. We'll look back at that. The gate from the half mile, that's going to cost him, too. That's a little bit of bad luck, Tim. Some bad luck, but he's straightening out well as he accelerates the speed down near the finish. Looks like he's driving well down on the final turn. Well, he's a great pilot. But it looks like it won't be that great a time as Horvath now goes through the finish curve and a final time of 59.52 as the first sled down the track. That mid-59 time wasn't that bad considering the mistakes he made. Look at the sled going back and forth across the ice. The ultimate in friction, which negates all sorts of time. Now, that was pilot air all the way. On the left-hand side, you'll see this half-mile ramp. This is where the passenger sleds exit the course at Mount Van Hovenberg at the half-mile start. Watch what happens to Bob Horvath here because he hits the half-mile exit gate right there. Boy, one thing is to have pilot air in one run, but to have bad luck in the same run, ooh, poor Bob Horvath. Now at the start, USA sled number four in eighth place after the second heat, the driver Brian Richardson and his brake man Edward Duncan, both from San Jose, California. Well, look at this sled here. You can see it's got a different design. Brian Richardson is an engineer. He designed the sled. And, you know, we'll tell you a story here after, ooh, he's... Got that same mistake, that same jinx that those inexperienced pilots have up top. The last American to win an Olympic medal in bobsledding was an engineer from Kodak named Art Tyler who designed his own sled. Back in the 50s. Yeah, built his own sled and then drove it to the bronze medal at the 56 games in Cortina. This guy's got the same ideas. Now watch the way this sled goes up and down and around this course, hits everything in sight. There he is high there. Watch him start bouncing around. He does never has control of the straightaway, but he's always got fast times at the bottom, so I think he's onto something here. Ooh, he's late there. There's the banging. Banging back and forth, both Richardson and Duncan, as we said, from Southern California. How do they get involved in this sport from such a winter hotbed? Ooh. Well, I don't know how they got involved, but they're here, and I tell you, I think Richardson's onto something with runners in the sled because it's fast. And through the finish with a time of 58.97 for Brian Richardson and Edward Duncan. That puts them into first place, but still with so many of the faster sleds yet to come on this third and final heat. Many of the Soviet athletes in today's competition are members of the extensive and powerful Soviet military. In the sport of bobsledding, it's been the Soviets, along with the East Germans and Swiss who have dominated, have won virtually all of the Olympic medals. This is, without argument, attributed to a solid disciplinary ethic. Translation, military training. The Americans, in their never-ending efforts to better themselves in this sport, are now further looking to their men in uniform. We're encouraging, uh, along with the uh, cooperation of the United States Military Sports Association, we encourage our uh, athletes to uh, try out each year for uh, bobsledding we have uh, running competition for the third in each uh, and service and uh, we, we do test that, that uh, the bobsled federation help us uh, conduct at uh, military installations Better all over the world and then we bring our top four uh, athletes from and each service way. here to uh, uh, participate in the, in the training i've been in the military now for three years and uh, before that i slid 
uh, as a civilian, and my biggest uh, problem was uh, waking up in the morning wondering if I was going to have enough money to, to, to slide that day. Uh, now, uh, getting a paycheck every two weeks and being able to train like I am, it, it's, it's a huge headache that is, has gone away. I mean, it's, it's something I don't have to worry about anymore. I don't have to worry about the finance part. As long as I work hard and train hard, uh, the military will support me. In this country, what we want to do is integrate the military with the civilian community. And, and I think that helps not only the military, but us, and it certainly helps our teams in the development process. And also, it's another avenue for us to uh, go out and collectively uh, get together athletes that'll, that'll really be, I would say, ideal for bobsledding. Now, you could do that here in Lake Placid. You could take a ride from the half mile, sign a waiver for them, pay $15, and believe me, if you get a chance to do it, it'll be the thrill of a lifetime. When we come back, Tim and I will bring you some more bobsled. Welcome back to Mount Van Hovenberg in Lake Placid. Tim Singer along with John Morgan as we wind down the final heat of this USA-USSR Friendship Bobsled Challenge. Now at the start, Soviet Union sled number two on Arso Rosenberg's and Arnis Teteris, the Breakman Teteris with a first place Breakman showing the 1987 National Championships. Well, we've mentioned before, this driver looks a little chunky, we might say, but... Very effective at the start. He's got power. He's in the sled early. The brake man going in a little longer with the push. It pays off a 539. That's the best push so far in this heat, but far from ooh, the best as ooh. they slide into curve one. Well, they're up near 550 after that mistake. And boy, everybody there has problems except for just a couple sleds. And it's amazing. It's such the, an easy part of the course. Now, as this third and final heat rolls along, we will pay closer attention to the split times. And coming up, a 28.63. That's the best split time right there so far in this final run. Nice line through Shady. He's got that slingshot out of Shady. He's straight as an arrow. Coming now into the S. Almost 70 miles an hour here, and it improves right up towards 12. 72 miles an hour here out of 12. Now into zigzag. Looking for the ice spray. Oh, he's high. There's some spray. That means, again, he's pulling on the ropes too much. A little late there. And approaching the finish curve now. The two Soviets come in at a finish time of 59.09 for Rosenberg and Teteris. Both these sliders hail from the sports-rich Soviet Republic of Latvia. That's just one spot on the map of an ever-changing political and sports culture in Eastern Europe. Like all bobsledders, the Soviets in today's competition are sporting warm-up jackets. But gone is the familiar CCCP, replaced by Latvia, the Soviet Republic from whence they come. I talked to several of the sliders. They made no secret about it. They're here representing Latvia, not the Soviet Union. This is a real-life sports-related example of the changes that are happening in Eastern Europe. Glasnost, athletic style. These guys are free to go where they want, say what they must. But there's a catch. While the bobsledders now have even the freedom of using corporate sponsorship on their sleds, some of their federation dollars, national money for so long used to build up the sport, is now being spent on other, more pressing, non-sports-related matters. After the political changes in our country, we need new sources to finance our top athletes, and one of the new sources should be the support from the industry, from the Western industry, for example, and so we, need, we see new colors in our old sleds. And another sled at the top of Mount Van Hovenberg, Soviet sled number one in sixth place after the second run, Batarags and Abalinch, 57 one hundredths of a second back, and John, of course, they had that great 506 start last time out. Well, look at his form, to watch his head not shaking, to just power pushing that sled. Look at him. You can just tell they're great athletes. The driver in quickly in a 516 start, another great start, but just as they had the great start, oh, John. There he goes they, again. They had the trouble at the bottom last time out. Well, he had his trouble up top, too, like right there again. But boy, down in zigzag, he drove his ball way out of bounds. A couple penalty strokes down there. Let's watch for his time, because I tell you, 
If he didn't have those problems last team, he'd be right in the hunt. 28-63, the time to be. 28-16, a significant amount ahead. Well, that's that start time. He'd be even better than that if he didn't have those problems in curve one. The driver, Valdemar Batarags. You know, we talked about sports-rich Latvia. Great basketball players and hockey players from the Soviet Union always come out of Latvia. Here he is in zigzag. His problem area. Oh, there he's high again, hitting the lip. So he still hasn't learned any lessons up there in that zigzag corner. The learning the key word as the Soviets still learning the track as the finish curve is taken in a time of 58-48. Good, Good time. time. That moves them in first place, up from sixth place. But the sleds that led the way heading into this heat are still to come. Here's how it stands midway through this third and final heat. Soviet sled number one, the one you just saw there, leading the way ahead of Richardson and Duncan of the United States. Then USA sled number one, Soviet number two, and in fifth, USA sled number seven. We've still got plenty of bobsledding, including the top five sleds still ahead, so stay with us. Welcome back to Lake Placid. Tim Singer along with John Morgan here for the final five sleds of the Soviet Union USA Friendship Challenge. John, these are the sleds that were top five in the standings after the second run, starting with in fifth place, Soviet Union sled number three. Good start times. Some problems with the curve one and some problems down in 12 and zigzag. Otherwise, this guy would also be in the hunt. Now they're on their start. Robert Olzals and Aris Butsons trying to beat a start of 516 by their Soviet teammate. 513, oh. John, off on the right foot. Well, I tell you, I think the track's getting a little faster. Well, that's not a bad exit right there. Great into turn one. Well, the thing about the track getting faster, it's got a little colder since the race has started. It's about 10 degrees colder, believe it or not. Sun's out. The ice is a little firmer. That's why we're seeing faster times. 28-16, the next split we're looking for, and a 27-97 best second split of the day, John. Remember, he had that good exit of curve one, too, so he's allowing the sled to grab all this momentum and acceleration. The driver, 24-year-old Robert Ozols of Riga, Latvia, finished second in the national oh. junior Whoa. rankings. Little mistake there. That's going to cost him. Zigzag, look for the ice spray. Go down oh. hard late there so now the straightaway to the finish curve and their finish time of 58 64 Ooh. they lost a considerable amount of time down at the bottom after that great second split yeah the bottom part of the course you got to drive obviously they don't know the course yet so a great close-up of the relief of these drivers they've been through a lot more than we know because we haven't been down the track a lot of danger a lot of risk a lot of speed in this sport and before we get to canada one and the start we'll talk to driver terry godzowski he earlier gave his impressions on just what this risk is all about it's not really the risk that attracts the people it's the ability to control the risk uh, everybody can take a risk in any form of life, but when you go you're up against a bobsled track, it's a new track, it's fast, you know the competition's stiff, it's not the risk, it's how am I going to control that risk. So Terry Godzowski already in progress on his run. Canada won. They were in first place, you may recall, after the first heat, fourth place entering this final run. Well, a lot of problems up there at the exit of curve one is costing the time down below. Anytime you have somebody that goes from first to fifth, that's major problems and mistakes they make to do that. And a full half second off the best split time, as you see, at 28.46, so not doing the job and trying to work their way up the standings. One thing about when you make the mistake and lose that time, you got to put that out of your mind. Maybe he's not done that, there's another mistake. Oh! Back and forth on that track, losing control as the speed Whoa. accelerates. We lost a lot of time up there in that curve 12. A lot of little corners down here that can really torture your time. So taking the finish curve with a finish time of 59-25, Canada won. Terry Godzowski and Len Sondegard currently in third place. 
You talk about a history. This month, the sport of bobsledding is celebrating its 100th anniversary. And what would a bobsled party even in Switzerland be without our own John Morgan? He wasn't going to miss this landmark event. Here in San Moritz, at the continuation of the 100th anniversary of bobsledding, they have a beautiful exhibit set up here at a hall in downtown San Moritz. As you can see right here next to me, there's a beautiful pictorial thing from the turn of the century in bobsledding. They have sleds from this era that are here. To what Cooperstown is to baseball, to what Indianapolis is to motor racing, this is to bobsledding. And to any bobsled enthusiast, this is a must. We're back in Lake Placid, which has a pretty impressive winter sports history itself. Now USA sled number five in third place after the second run. Driver Bruce Roselli and brakeman Ron Recker just 36 hundredths of a second back. A couple good athletes from the Midwest here. Roselli's wife just gave birth to a baby. So he'd like to celebrate with a move up in the standings. Not a bad start, 527, still in third place though. And not a bad skid, one of the better exits of curve one, the nasty curve one as we've seen all day long. John, you talked about a couple of good athletes. Try brakeman Ron Recker, an all-city high school football and baseball player, college football player, and also a boxer in the Junior Olympics as they approach the second split at 28-19, third test of the heat. Roselli, an experienced driver of this course. Down the straightaway, pretty straight here. Let's watch. Oh, oh. Skid. oh and he did the same thing on Horvath did. He hit that half-mile gate. Bad luck. Zigzag. Watch for the ice spray. Roselli looking for a time, John. 58-31. That will move him into first place. He needs that timer better to get on top as he approaches the finish curve in a time of 58-73. Doesn't do it. Good enough only for second place for the team of Bruce Roselli and Ron Recker. Yeah, a lot of bad luck up there in that half-mile gate. I think that was at least 2,500s worth of time right there. Hi, Paige. Hi, Paige. You hear it? The newborn daughter John just mentioned. Great, great salute to his daughter and a good showing for Bruce Roselli. On that very positive note, we're going to take a little break from Lake Placid. We'll be back with the final two sleds right after this. down to the final two sleds and just six one hundredths of a second separating them. A very great bobsled race when you're dealing with this li limited amount of time. One of these two guys is walking away with the gold medal and one's gonna have the silver. This is Darren Peterson and Tracy Ellis in second place right now and a start time of 532, not a great start. But good enough to get him down, and but that skid's not gonna help him. Turn one, having trouble with all the drivers so far, or vice versa. Nobody's been clean through there in their three heats today. Everybody's had at least one heat of problems. Some of the guys have had all three heat problems there. 27.97, the impressive split time to try to beat. They don't do it just off the pace. 28.29, John, you talk about having problems, but that's what it's all about for these young sliders in their first international competition. Well, it's a great experience for both sides of the Atlantic. The Soviets are here with their good teams. The United States got some upcoming teams. And right now it's Darren Peterson and Rod Horvath going head to head for the medal. Well, the time to count right now, 58.99, should Peterson beat that he will move into first place with only Horvath behind him through the finish curve and a 58-56 so it is Darren Peterson the youngster from Minnesota currently in first place with not too bad a run and obviously a very good afternoon. Well, that's going to make Ron Horvath think about things up there at the top exiting their sled not yet sure of their time Darren Peterson and Tracy Ellis with a fine showing. And now they know what their time is with a triumphant handshake for the duo. Now we've got Ron Horvath and Jim Perella at the start. This is the final sled of the day. These are the leaders, and it is their race to win or lose. Well, six hundredths of a second is not a lot of time, especially when the guy that you're challenging with is down safely at the bottom with a good heat. We watch this start closely. 
5.32 is what Peterson had. And a 5.27, John. Well, that's 500's advantage. Let's see his exit. Oh, about to say, ooh, worse problems than Peterson. Actually, he recovers now, though, and, of course, he has the experience of driving. Ron Horvath, the 38-year-old veteran, a three-time world team member. Well, 28-29 was Peterson's time. 28-24, that's only 500, just like the start. Doing what he has to. John, what a story this would be. Horvath, the veteran, but his brake man, Jim Perella, in his first ever week, week of bobsledding. Yeah, that's an amazing story in itself, but here comes Horvath straight down the middle. Keeping a close eye, John, on 58-63. It's Whoop. that Ooh, time or better. That little trouble, Whoa. though. Bump there, too. A lot of speed, though. We'll see how he comes out. A lot of speed, a reckless drive, and a 58-33. So he is in. Ron Horvath and Jim Perella, a first place showing. John, that pretty much exemplified the whole afternoon. The bumpy rides showed the good speed. Check this bump out here. Watch what happens to the brake when they hit this little bump coming off a of zag. Watch this sled just jump. Airborne. Whoa! Boy, they lucky they just didn't come out of the sled, so Ron Horvath, a couple hundred meters from the finish line, almost a little disaster here. Now into 15, same problem. He's late there, too. But as Tim Slinger said, the rough ride seems to be the fastest ride. Nothing rough, however, about a first place finish, a triumph, and a high five for your winners, Ron Horvath and Jim Perella. Taking a look at the standings, it's Horvath and Perella in first place, followed by Darren Peterson and Tracy Ellis. Good group of youngsters to look out for in the future. In third, the Soviets, Batarogs and Abba Lynch. Then you have Roselli and Wrecker, and finally in fifth place, the other Latvian duo of Ozals and Vutsans. We'll be back to wrap things up from Lake Placid, including interviews with the winners when we return. Welcome back to Lake Placid, and we have some major developments. Ron Horvath, the winning driver who we just saw triumphantly at the finish, has been disqualified. Ironically enough, something we touched on earlier, John Morgan, the weight of the sled. Well, Timmy, like in horse racing, where they weigh the jockey and the saddle after the race, here in bobsledding, the jury, they weigh the top five sleds. Ron Horvath was disqualified for being overweight, but it comes to mind, this is the second time this season he's been caught like this. Up at the Can-Am Challenge in Calgary, he finished in the money. He was disqualified up there. I think back of people's careers maybe one time being disqualified. For Ron Horvath to be disqualified twice in one season, it's unheard of. Great showing for Darren Peterson as we now look at the newly revised official standings. The winner of the USA-USSR Friendship Challenge, Peterson and Ellis. They're followed by the Soviets, Batarogs and Avalanche as everyone moves one notch up. Roselli finishing in third, then in fourth. Roberts Olzals, fifth place, the Canadians, Terry Godzowski and Len Sundegaard. Then the back five has Brian Richardson and then Bob Horvath. In eighth place, it's Anarso Rosenbergs of the Soviet Union. Charlie Mitchell and Jeff Peake, the local sliders, finish in ninth. And in tenth place, from the Soviet Union, Andres Zell and Avers Grundis. And the United States Navy's Brian Morgan leading off the rest of the pack. Once again, Ron Horvath, the race winner, disqualified John Morgan standing by with Horvath. Ron, your sled was overweight. Uh, yes, we weighed in today, and uh, they claimed you were five pounds overweight. Uh, we weighed in two days before to check our weight on the same scale, and we were two pounds light. So we took uh, the precautions to uh, do what we thought had to be done, and uh, it's just unfortunate for us that uh, that wasn't enough. Everything turned out great here in Lake Placid. The weather turned beautiful, and the competition got better with each turn down the run. Well, you know, the biggest problem the United States has always had is that we compete here in this track, and over in Europe there's seven or eight European tracks that the Europeans all compete against each other, and that really, really improves the competitive sense that the Europeans have always had. 
for the USA to have these pilots today competing against the European field will really improve their competitive sense down the line. The most competitive of them all today, our champion, Darren Peterson, just one of what seems like many up-and-coming U.S. drivers. Yeah, there's three or four U.S. pilots out here, depending on what type of start times they get, had a chance to win this today. Peterson won it, but really, Ron Horvath, the 38-year-old veteran from Youngstown, Ohio, won the race, and I find it surprisingly that he got disqualified for being six pounds overweight, not because of the rule, but because he's got a lot of experience in this sport and he probably should be more aware of that the next time down all right john morgan bob sledding expert will put you on the hot seat the 1992 games coming up in albertville france your prediction for the americans well it all deals with that start time it's the the sport has come down to such an equal thing with the sleds the 50 meter start clock is the most important thing and if the united states can be in the top five in the first 50 meters they'll have a chance of being in the top five at the bottom without the top five 50 meter start time they're going to be an also ran Okay, we'll see how accurate you are. No changing your mind on that one. That's going to do it from Lake Placid in the USA USSR Friendship Bobsled Challenge for John Morgan. I'm Tim Singer saying thanks for joining us and so long, everyone. The USA USSR Friendship Bobsled Challenge has been brought to you by the United States Postal Service, official worldwide sponsor of the 1992 Olympic Games, and by Express Mail, overnight service from your post office.